Uh, hello, Tony here from Lightwave Digital. In today's tutorial, we're going to be carrying on with looking at the particle emitters in Lightwave 3D. So in part one, we looked at the generator and the particles tabs, which I'll put a link in the description. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at the motions and the ETC. So if we start at the top at the velocity option, so what this does, this determines how fast the actual particles are going to move but also they're influenced by uh, what settings you put into the X, Y, and Z. So currently 100 is normal. So if I was to just put in, say, 5 meters, let's just press play. So we've got 5 meters up in the air, and the velocity is, a, is 100. So if we put that, if we just zoom out a little bit, actually. So through this speed of 5 meters through the Y, this is how far the actual particles will travel with the normal speed if i was to chop this in half to 50 obviously the how far it travels it will be 50 but if i was to come here and put say 200 they're going to double how fast they can travel within that five meters like so and so again you can decide how and which way you want your particles to move so if you put a negative number in so you can decide which way they want to go if you've got say five and five in one of the angles this is where you'll see it going at a certain angle like so there well, let's just put this back to zero another option is the target option so if I wanted the actual particles to target a certain object, I mean, I haven't got any objects in my scene, but you could have objects. It could be nulls, lights, cameras, whatever you want. So, for instance, if I press play and then I target, say, a light, you can see they're trying to reach the actual light, but they're not quite moving fast enough and they're not actually, based on the actual lifetime, living enough time to kind of reach it. So, we put in a fast speed, say, 500 in velocity so you can see then there's enough speed and time for them to reach it and again let's switch it to the other light or the camera or if you had other objects in it again so that's that's for the actual targeting you've also got the explosion so with explosion it's basically exactly what it kind of says it gives that kind of explosion uh, effect to your particle so if i was to say let's add five in here like so. So five, as you can see, it's, cut, it's pushing them out quite far. So let's put it down to one. And as you can see, you're getting this kind of effect. So if we had like, uh, let's say five through the Y, let's push this velocity back down to 100. You can see that that one is, is sending them out slightly. So let's double it. And let's go back to five where we had it before. And you can see, and these work together with the vibration. So these are how the actual particles vibrate around each other. So if we put in five in here as well, in fact, let's turn off the actual uh, explosion so you can see how it works. And let's go and put in, say, 20. And I believe you can still go and tell it to kind of target an actual object. So they are firing it more across towards the actual light however it's got no control over it because of how high this is do you know what i mean if it was less you can see they're, they're vibrating let's put in see how it copes with there we go so they're still heading towards the light but a lower setting works a lot better because then it's not so erratic and stuff and you've got a uh, the, the actual bottom bit here is the minimum value as that you can use as well you've also got the threshold as well so threshold i can't say i've ever used it that much i mean the values uh, are kind of set up to to help with the vibration of the effective range so if the particle's initial speed is under the threshold one value no vibrations will occur if it exceeds the threshold two value the vibration is applied so you can actually fade the speed in. I mean, it's a bit like, uh, I suppose you could use this for the effect like water coming out of garden hose. So as more water comes out, it'll fan out more. 
and it's a bit like that. But like most things, it's 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 a little bit of experimenting and to seeing what these effects do. So let's just go and reset these back to zero and zero. Put this back to 100. We don't want it to target. We're just going up in the air. So let's jump to the ETC. So then we've got the gravity. So if, if you're thinking about Earth's gravity, it's minus 9.8. So as you can see, those particles, based on how heavy they are, are getting pulled down straight away quite quickly. Let's go back to the motion. Let's tell him to go up 15 meters in the air. And let's have a look at them. As you can see, they're coming back down a lot. So if we kind of zoom in a little bit, you can see they're coming up and they're dropping down. But at the same time, we're only letting it, the, each particle live for 60 frames. But what we could do is we could go back here and we could say, okay, let's put two in vibration. In fact, let's go as high as five. So now you can see they're coming up and you can see them coming back down, a bit like a Roman candle, I suppose, you know, in fireworks. And so they're coming up, but the gravity is then bringing them back down like so, which is quite cool. And then you've got the positioning, basic positioning of the no nozzle. Uh, obviously, with the actual gravity, you can change it. I mean, I always usually just use the Y, but you can. there's nothing stopping you uh, using... I mean, let's put minus two, just a random minus two, and it's gonna, it's gonna bend over to the side more. So let's put a minus five. So as you can see, it could be somebody, imagine a, a somebody like a fireman with a hose and the water spraying up to the building somehow, you know, a top floor fire or something like that. So you can decide on how much that that bends. So the gravity is pulling those particles along to the minus. Uh, X like so, which is quite cool. And like I say, you play, you can play around with them, uh, and and so on. In the next tab, we've got the motion blur and the parent blur. So I've just set up a little like forty frame animation here. Uh, so as you can see, they're both at a hundred. So with the position blur, sometimes you may not want the particles exploding from the center of the emitter. The position blur value randomizes the initial particle's position by using velocity. If you set this to an option of zero, the particles are created side by side. With the parent motion, use the parent motion settings to control how much of the emitter's motion is applied to their particles. If it's set to zero, the particles are emitted the same no matter how the emitter may be moving. You've got a max speed set in for max speed field. This regulates the top speed of the particles. You've got a loop option. So the loop frame settings is used to repeat the particles generated and the motion in the set number of frames. For example, if you enter a loop frame value of 30 frames in a two second animation, two particles will be generated with the same birth location and motion. And then you've got the record step frame. So that's the motion and the actual ETC tabs. If, before I finish, you you shut down the actual emitter panel and you want to bring it back up, just make sure you're on it here, look, in your objects, and bring up properties, go to effects, and then double-click it, and it will bring it down here, and then you can carry on editing the settings you want to set, change. Uh, look out for the next part, which I'll be going through these last four panels for the rotate interaction files and edit effects thanks for listening